hello and welcome back. That's right, you're getting ready to go on holiday. You've got your sunglasses, you've got your holiday money, you've got your passport, you've even got your silly hat. However, even though you've got all of that in place, is your data actually safe? Right now, you've probably got your network attached storage device connected and buzzing around there in the background. However, are you sure it's secure before you go? Use this video as a checklist to walk you through between 10 to 12 different things you can double check on your system before you go. This is not a video where I'm gonna be talking about backups. We've already covered that in a bunch of videos and I'll cover it more at the end. This video is about going for you a few simple checks that you can perform on your network attached storage system to ensure that it is not accessible by anyone but you while you're on holiday. And if you'd rather, you can even set it up to not even you can access it during that time. Let's crack on with our first one. Just before we crack on, it's worth highlighting, we have done a full article here of uh, ransomware and malware attacks that have occurred in the last 10 years, just to give you some idea about the extent to which these things can happen and also how quickly they can happen with almost no brand that I know of ever being unaffected as well as Eddie's quick breakdown here, giving you some idea of just a quick checklist of things to go through before you go on holiday. But the first thing I'm gonna recommend, of course, probably the most obvious, is to make sure that your firmware is up to date on your NAS. Always check for updates, always have automatic updates in place and in the case of both Synology and QNAP they have comprehensive auto updates as well as the option at least on QNAP to choose what kind of updates you want to go for whether they are critical whether they are feature rich or otherwise whether you want it to automatically update or give you an alert to let you know that an update is available and therefore you can action at your own behest. Next up don't go thinking just because you've done the system updates that you're fully covered make sure you go into the package center go into the settings and make sure you have enabled updates on individual apps because just in case the OS isn't the only way in which you're going to enable an outside attacker, make sure that your applications that are installed have the latest updates available. Often you can find that updates that do have um, availability, like you can see here, it will let you know that individual apps do have updates ready to download available in the package center. And make sure if you are running beta applications that you have these at least disabled while you're away, because beta apps by their very definition are unfinished and therefore leave you open to attack vectors. Next up, this doesn't apply to all NAS vendors, but some NAS vendors like Solange and QNAP arrive with a security system scanner. This allows you to scan your system periodically and get alert in case one of the other many, many things that we're gonna cover in this video are vulnerable. So make sure to enable security setups and, uh, setups and periodically scan your system for any kind of vulnerabilities there. Once these scans are completed, you all too often find that some of the weaknesses we're going to discuss today will be immediately brought to your attention. And you can go ahead directly from these user interfaces, at least on the NAS brands that support them, to make those amendments before you go away on holiday and put your feet up. And as you can see from the security scanners we ran on the Synology and the QNAP, both of these are dictating that I should do something about those passwords. And indeed, that is really, really important. Make sure you do not have weak passwords on your system. Don't open yourself up to brute force hacks. Make sure that the passwords that you have running on your system are unique. And moreover, make sure those unique passwords are also backed by two-factor authentication with your um, two-factor authentication, OTP, two-step authenticator, Google authenticator, or whatever one you want to utilize. Make sure you're using two-factor authentication on your system as that will at least allow that your device in your pocket that you take on holiday, be it a tablet, be it a phone, will be able to utilize an extra layer of security no matter where you are in the world. Next up, while we're talking about users, disable that admin account. I can't believe in 2024 we still have systems that have admin accounts enabled. Make sure that account is disabled. You'll be able to find the admin account directly within the user panel of any NAS brand. The majority of NAS brands these days do disable the admin account, but you may have enabled it in the past to run certain processes, be they customized or even some high-level uh, bridging between some of the network hardware equipment you have for automated control. But make sure before you go away that admin accounts are disabled. Next up, enable auto block. All NAS brands have this feature to a greater or lesser degree. Make sure you go into the security settings of your chosen NAS and you'll find it under IP protection. This allows you to set up a delay after a certain number of incorrect passwords. You can set that up for a consistent amount of time if you wish, or just a certain smaller period of time, as well as in the notification center, setting up alerts that you get notified when 
a certain password or at least an account with an associated login and password has been incorrectly entered several times. So make sure you enable that before you go away to get proactive notifications to make sure that you can block that individual IP if needed. This is another one of the often overlooked ones, but before you go away on holiday, make sure you disable file services that you don't plan on using. So for example, SSH is probably the most common one. If you've enabled SSH, before you go away, make sure you disable it. But it goes further than that because there are actually different kinds of file services you may be running on your system. The most useful and probably the most overused of all of them is of course SMB, which is predominantly a Windows-based access method over the network there. So if you want to make sure that no other device can access the system while you're away, you can go ahead and disable that, but that's quite extreme. At the very least, make sure that you have disabled third party and very lesser used file protocols uh, on your system before you go away, because chances are, if you are going to be bombarded by attack patterns, this is all going to happen via some of these lesser used ones, not just SMB. So make sure you've got those disabled before you go away. This next tip isn't going to be for everyone, but for those that are traveling abroad on a different time zone and are concerned that things might happen to their system out of hours, you can of course enable the system to power down and power on on a power schedule there. That's right. Uh, again, this is supported by the majority of NAS brands in the market, but it allows you to have your system power on and power off at certain different times of the day. So for example, if you're traveling to the other side of the world and while you're asleep, your NAS is in an air, you know, accessible via a different time zone there you can make sure that the system is powered down while you are asleep wherever you are in the world and powered on and again all of this can be managed on the majority of nas brands there it's a little extreme but i definitely recommend it to those that are just extra concerned that if an incident goes down that they will be asleep and therefore not able to action any kind of notification or alert Next up, if you are going to action uh, an alert that you've received from your NAS, perhaps a notification you've received, do keep in mind that the remote access protocol you utilize to action, whether it is to shut down the system or start batting down the hatches one by one, the remote access protocol you set up needs to be secure enough that that in itself is not going to be an attack vector that will be utilized. Now, I would recommend one of two mainline uh, methods. Number one, you take advantage of the inbuilt remote access protocol provided to you by your NAS brand of choice. For example, in the case of Synology and QNAP, they do provide their own means to use the Synology and QNAP servers respectively as a relay point to access the NAS with no data being transmitted unless you want to commit to file transfers there. However, if you're not overly reliant on that or you want to restrict things even further, I do recommend utilizing a service like Tailscale. It's completely free, up to 10 devices, and it is supported as an app that you can download on both Synology and QNAP. Installing it will allow you to create VPN tunnel points between all of your devices. In short, it will allow that your NAS in one location can only be accessed by your mobile or your desktop specifically to that NAS back and forth, rather than an open doorway that may be utilized by others. Before you go away, do make sure that those notifications that you set up are actually done effectively. Not just that you've associated an email account, associated an SMS, or associated a third party messaging platform to get those notifications, but more importantly, that the kinds of notifications you are receiving are the right ones. The last thing you want is to receive 100 notifications a day when only one of them really matters. So you can actually tailor quite well different kinds of alerts. For example, event notifications create a rule on the QNAP here so you can have when certain apps are triggered, when certain events happen within the logs. For example, unknown IPs coming through, certain applications waking up, certain hardware or CPU utilization going over a certain point. Make sure you set up the rules for your notifications effectively. The same goes on the Synology platform. Thanks to it having quite a comprehensive log system, it means that when you do get alerts, you can set them up to be pretty extensive, not only to um, if you have IPs trying to access your system that are unknown, but also hardware resources being utilized just a little bit too much for a system that should really be in standby. 
Next up, this one might be a little bit late in the day if you've not already done it, but if you are really concerned about your NAS being pinged and then eventually attackers realizing your system may have a vulnerability, one of the things you can do is to randomize the port. As you can see the number at the top there ending 5000. That is more often 5000 or 5001 are the default ports on a lot of these systems. And it's highly recommended, a QNAP on 8080, that you head into the control panel and randomize those ports. Go ahead and give it a different number. Don't make it too easy for the attackers to find your system's administration port and therefore try to exploit it or at least try to heavy load that port until the system falls over. Ensuring you've got a certificate in place to encrypt data that's transmitted between you and the NAS is important. As you can see on the top left, I've got an unsecure connection. The reason being that right now I'm accessing the NAS on a local area network directly, but you're going to be accessing it remotely when you're on your Hollybobs. So make sure when you go into the control panel and then from there, make sure you have a certificate in place. You can even replace the existing QNAP certificate with a Let's Encrypt certificate completely for free. The same goes on the Synology side where you can have a certificate that you can apply to individual services if you choose and make sure that certificate if you go for it there you can apply it very very quickly and just make sure that that is what you are utilizing to access the NAS remotely and make sure you have at least a Synology certificate or the free Let's Encrypt certificate in place before you set up any kind of remote access because if data transmission between you and the NAS is intercepted that can include important authentication data which can be then utilized and exploited against your system to get in. Making sure the data that's being transmitted between them even if it is simple keystrokes being encrypted is tremendously important. This last one's kind of an extra. It's not really part of the 10 recommendations on this list. However, it might apply to some of you out there. It's a little bit niche, but it's important. A lot of the time when we do talk about NAS systems, we're talking about historic ransomware attacks. But of course, malware and viruses are a thing. But they've gone down in recent years in favor of ransomware by attackers because it's just an easier way for them to get money back. They don't really want to kill your system. They just want to make sure you need to pay for your data. But if you are worried about malware are worried about viruses most NAS brands do have comprehensive anti-malware and antivirus tools in the case of QNAP for example they've got a malware remover and built into that scanner that we talked about earlier on that will allow you to also make sure that your system is protected from those threats that are inside the data that you may be backing up to your system. Same goes with Synology. If you go into the control panel, you can find numerous options built in for you to find out about how to enable antivirus software and anti-malware built into the system. Moreover, on the Synology side, not only have you got two different kinds of antivirus software that you can install inside, but when you make your way into uh, the security settings, you can also enable Spectre and Meltdown uh, protection. Now, these are different uh, mitigate uh, different threats that are you know NAS systems have become increasingly less susceptible to but it still is still something you can enable just keep in mind that it will affect your performance as traffic is monitored quite heavily and that's really it. As mentioned in the introduction, this is about ensuring your system is secure while you're away in terms of access. However, this video has not discussed backups. The reason being that notwithstanding that a lot of users shouldn't even be going away on holiday if their system isn't appropriately backed up. Um, on top of that, I've done multiple guides over the last few years covering different methods of backing up individual NAS systems. I'll link to a number of these in the description below. But there are so, so many ways to back up your data to the cloud to another NAS, to USB, and internally into other storage pools, although I don't recommend that. There is no excuse not to have your data backed up. And on top of that, I've also done lots of written guides for different methodologies for your backups there, as well as Ed putting some guides together for how exactly the pros and cons of each backup method work out. So I recommend you check all of those out. But apart from that, I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Go out. Get a tan, relax, have another glass of something interesting, but just make sure your NAS is secure. Have yourself a wonderful trip, and I'll see you on the next video.